Good evening, and welcome to this beautiful evening to celebrate our dear sister, Daphne. And before we begin uh, the celebration, we'd like to begin as we do all things in prayer. And I invite everyone just to take a moment and to breathe in the goodness of God who is present in this sacred and holy place. And dear friends, we gather to celebrate and honor the dedication, the commitment, and the loyalty given by our friend and colleague, Daphne. We thank you, loving God, for Daphne's devotion to St. Joseph's Hospital and for her many years of sharing her experience and her wisdom with others. As we honor Daphne, we begin with a passage from the book of Matthew. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Daphne, long before you entered, this beautiful vocation of nursing and said, yes, I accept your will, dear Lord. He played his part also. He planted seeds of love and kindness in the portals of your heart. For it's clear that you have been gifted with a sympathetic heart, a blessed from the beginning to willing and a willingness to touch and heal those who actually needed a new heart. And Daphne, you have cared for thousands of patients and families who have been far better off because you have touched them. And by your blessed compassion and the person that God has created you to be, no one could be more consoling or a better nurse than you. So we thank you. And we thank God that he planted those seeds within you that grew into beautiful integrity, devotion, and dedication to a vocation of 25 years of gracing us. Thank you for your gentle smile, your healing touch, and your caring ways. Your commitment will always be cherished your shoes will never be filled, and your spirit will never be matched. Daphne, I invite you to rise, and I invite everyone present to extend their hand over Daphne as we pray. May God, the great healer and heart of mystery, guide you as you continue your journey of life. May he lead you to know him even more intimately as you commune with him in prayer. May God, our divine shepherd, protect you and lead you to seek greener pastures and still waters. May God, our creator, give you the spirit of new life as you learn through your experiences of joy and suffering. May God, our divine coach, hone the qualities of your life that will enable you to serve him better through your discipleship. May God, the loving vine, allow his life to flow through you so that you may be a living branch for others. And may God, the heavenly lover, draw you closer to himself as you commune with him each morning and each evening. And may God the Father encircle you with his love. May God the Son encircle you with his peace. And may God the Holy Spirit encircle you with his joy forever and ever. And the people said, Amen. Amen.
Well, good evening, everyone. Good to be with you today. Uh, I'm Dr. Thomas Smythe. I'm the president and CEO of the University of Maryland St. Joseph Medical Center. It's great to be with you, Judy. Beautiful reflection. Thank you so much for that. Before we get started tonight, I just want to take a moment to thank the foundation staff for putting on these events. Um, in the heyday, uh, prior to COVID, we would have one big event and all six inductees would come and we'd be down in the rotunda and there would be several hundred people and enjoy and celebration and it was, it was wonderful and loud and happy. And it's the same way now, but it's much more intimate. And actually there's a certain beauty that comes from the intimacy that we have felt throughout these events. And I just want to take a minute to thank the foundation uh, for their amazing work, particularly Lexi Bano. Thank you for coordinating these. Uh, the foundation staff under Mimi Tinkler's leadership has just done an amazing work here. And I want to thank all of you, Daphne's family, for being here to celebrate with us tonight. Uh, you know, my father was a urologist, and I saw him leave early in the morning and come home late at night. I never knew where he really went, until eventually I became a, a, a volunteer one summer and had a sense of it. Uh, thank you for allowing your wife, your mother, your aunt, um, be with us and, and, bar and allow, borrowing, you know, lending her to us because it meant the world, I know, to me personally as a physician and to my patients and to this entire organization. So let me tell you a little bit about why we're here. Um, and then a little bit, Daphne, about your history. So in 2014, we initiated the Profiles of Compassion Society to recognize exceptional nurses who have shown a true extraordinary commitment to our Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia's ideals of reverence, integrity, compassion, excellence, and stewardship. The nurses in this society emulate the sisters through their excellence in nursing, combined with daily expressions of love in caring for their patients as well as their colleagues. They are truly the best of us. Tonight, we have the distinct pleasure of inducting Daphne Goodall Clennon, RN, into this extraordinary group of nurses. There is a commitment to clinical excellence at UM St. Joseph that rivals the best hospitals and health systems in the country. A prevalent sense of gratitude fills our hallways and surrounds us every day. Gratitude felt by our patients and their families and gratitude demonstrated for each other. Every member of the St. Joseph's team comes together, we blend our talents and skills, and we work with compassion to make a positive difference in the life of our fellow human beings. No one fills this role better than our nurses. These heroes are, the, are on the front lines every day and every night making sure that our patients are healed in body, mind, and spirit. Daphne, you embodied these virtues every single day during your nursing career here, and it's why we're here tonight. I feel a true connection to you, Daphne. You may not know why, but you were one, as you know, of 11 children. My mother was one of 13 children, and I was one of eight children. Growing up in a large family is a unique experience, and I certainly know firsthand the joys and challenges that siblings sometimes face when we feel like we're just part of a crowd and maybe we're not getting quite the individual attention that we would get. In addition to that, my appreciation is that you are the oldest child in your family, just like my mother was in her family, and thus you had the additional responsibility of raising your younger siblings, I'm sure. This role, however, instead of pulling, pulling you away from caring for others, actually drew you to care for others. You cared for your brothers and sisters as a labor of love, opening you to the gifts to be found when one truly feels love and compassion for others. It was this early role that led Daphne to become a nurse. How lucky for us that after emigrating to the United States from Jamaica with her husband in 1980, Daphne was able to pursue her dream of being a nurse. It was not an easy road, however, as Daphne was now raising children of her own, working nights as a nursing assistant while her husband, who worked all day, watched the children. But your dream of becoming a registered nurse never wavered, and your years as a nursing assistant only reinforced your love of caring for others. I'm now uh, 
I am thrilled to report that after Daphne became a registered nurse, it was the patients that you cared for in a subacute facility that led you to St. Joe's in 1995. Apparently, these patients were always telling her what fantastic care they had received at St. Joe's, convincing Daphne that this was the place where she needed to be. While Daphne's natural empathy and compassion made her an excellent fit for our oncology service, her happy nature led her to desire to care for patients who were seriously ill but perhaps had a less arduous journey in front of them. Daphne wanted to make people permanently well, sometimes a difficult task in cancer treatment where therapies may be as tough as the illness itself. It turned out that our Heart Institute was the perfect place for Daphne. Here her excellent technical skills would mesh with her friendly optimism as she saw her patients improve and later be discharged from St. Joe's with the promise of leading healthy and happy lives. Daphne, I know that you retired in 2019 right before we were faced with the daunting challenge that is the COVID-19 pandemic. However, I like to think that the incredible resilience, optimism, and selflessness that I saw personally and that our staff saw from you since the start of the pandemic is a legacy that you personally left to your colleagues so we knew to how to behave during these unprecedented times. It is the very traits that you have in abundance and have imparted to others which allow us to fill, fulfill our mission of loving service and compassionate care. So on behalf of an incredibly grateful organization, Daphne, I wanna thank you personally for your well-deserved selection as a 2021 Profiles of Compassion Society inductee. We are incredibly grateful for the commitment you made to UM St. Joseph for nearly 25 years. Congratulations. And now I'd like to welcome Nicole Beeson, our Chief Nursing Officer and Senior Vice President of Patient Care Services to the podium for a few remarks. Thank you, Dr. Smythe, and, and welcome. And hi, Daphne. I so wish that we would have had an opportunity to work together while you were here. You were, you were heading out and I was coming in and our paths just didn't cross, but I'm so happy to see you here tonight. And truly, on behalf of all of University of Maryland, St. Joseph, and the whole Division of Nursing, thank you for your commitment to our craft and to the core of nursing. In more ways that can be counted, you have exemplified UM St. Joseph's mission, our values, the core of who we are. You should be extremely proud, and I'm sure your family is so proud to be sitting here with you for this personal and professional recognition you're receiving tonight. You have exemplified excellence throughout your career here and through your work in cardiac care especially. This is a challenging area to work in, in particular, where you have to have both exceptional clinical skills and really good intuition as well. And so crisis can arise at any time, and clearly you have to have high levels of flexibility and diverse expertise and knowledge. In your time here, Daphne, you displayed clinical excellence in your nursing practice, but I'd like to recognize that the heart of your practice is your nursing excellence that stem not only from your clinical skills, but also from the level of compassionate care you provided every single one of your patients. Daphne, you truly do embody our values of keeping our patients' care at the core of what we do. It is our true north. And so I appreciated hearing stories about, about you since I didn't have an opportunity to work with you directly. And what I loved were how much you loved telling stories about running into your patients out in the real world. And so how much joy it would bring you when your patients would come and stop and tell you how much the care you provided had impacted their lives. This is the joy of nursing, bringing light into our patients' lives. It's when they are at their lowest points and you're there to foster them, care for them in a gentle and compassionate way. And to me, this is the truest demonstration of the power of the human spirit to lift one another up. And so Daphne, I'm so incredibly grateful for all that you've done for so many, truly countless lives I'm sure that you've touched. And I'm so proud that no matter what, you will always remember 
that you are a member of this family of UM St. Joseph. And now I would like to call Lee Chapman to come forward. Lee has the distinct honor of inducting you, Daphne, into the Profiles of Compassion Society. Lee. I would also like to welcome Mr. C, Daphne, the entire family. Thank you, Nicole, Dr. Smythe, and the foundation for a beautiful evening. It is so lovely to be here. We have chosen a calling that invites people who are worried, suffering, to share their stories and allow us to help. If any work ought to give spiritual satisfaction to the worker, it is this. Joy and burnout ought not to rule the day. This is a quote from Don Berwick, and he was a past president and CEO of the Institute for Healthcare Improvement. And one quote that Ms. Daphne not only used in her presentations to staff on Two Central, but embodied every single day during her 24 plus years of nursing practice. Ms. Daphne, your love for your patients, your colleagues, and this community was palpable every day. I was able to watch how you cared for your patients. If on average you had four patients per shift, serving three shifts per week over 24 plus years, you have impacted the lives of over 15,000 patients. You have not only medically cared for them, but you have been a spiritual and emotional healer as well. Your effortless, and I say effortless, blend of both the science and the art of nursing, you cared for the whole human in that bed. When it comes to your colleagues, some of whom are here tonight, Daphne, you set the bar high. You are a lifelong learner and were a source of such encouragement for professional advancement and growth, as well as evidence-based practice. So many staff were blessed by your leadership and your mentorship, both actively and passively, just by your grace, your smile, and your kind nature. During your time as a senior clinical nurse, you gave a presentation on finding joy and meaning in the workplace. And boy, is that relevant now. We know that, cha that changes in healthcare are not decreasing, and you so graciously remind us that while we have little control over many aspects of this, we do have the power to adopt behaviors and approaches that will bring meaning, purpose, and joy into the workplace. Daphne, I confidently speak for so many when I say you have made a lasting impression on my heart, and I'm so honored to have worked with you. So, in true Daphne fashion, I would like to say that it brings me great joy to ask Miss Daphne to join me at this time. There we go, Mother. Good? Okay, there you go. So, Ms. Daphne, on behalf of the University of Maryland St. Joseph Medical Center, it is my pleasure and joy to induct you into the Profiles of Compassion Society Class of 2021. Good afternoon. I don't know where to, to start after everything that is said already. But I just want to say how truly grateful, how honored I am to stand here in your midst today. Um, it took a little while for me to get myself together, even to think what I'm going to say. But then I started. 
And I like this proverb that said, it takes a village to raise a child, but I'm not a child. But my village is this organization. And I want to say, please forgive me, I just, it's been so emotional. And, um, and it's happy tears. Um, I'm very, very grateful. I can say my career, I've been nurtured, supported, and I felt so cared for throughout my nurse's, nurse's journey in this organization. I just want to say again, I'm going to repeat how grateful, how honored I am to have worked in this organization. I'm also truly blessed to be inducted in this Profiles of Compassion Society. When um, the chief nursing officer, Nicole Beeson, called me, I was utterly speechless. At first, when I look at my phone, it said potential spam. And I thought, <laughs> but I answered, and she said, my name is Nicole Beeson. I'm calling from University of Maryland. I said, OK. She says, you've been inducted in the Profiles of Compassion. I said, huh? <laughs> and she kept talking. But I, you know, just so shocking, I, did, I couldn't say anything. Then I said to her, I said, on my phone, it says potential spam. <laughs> she says, I can tell you this is not a spam call. <laughs> So then I asked her again, I said, who are you again? <laughs> <laughs> then she explained herself and told me about the whole thing, which and then I realized, you know, I knew at f before, but I guess just my shock, just the utter <laughs> surprise that, you know, for that phone call, not expecting it or anything. So it was shocking. And when she told me, I said, okay, well, thank you but I really didn't know what to say. I just said to her, I'm so speechless, I don't know what to say. She said, it's okay, I'll wait to see you. I said, okay. And then I said to my husband, I said, what did she say again? <laughs> because, just my shock. <laughs> it was just so surprising to me, you know, that such a thing happened. But I can truly say, I just could not believe that this hospital and its administration think so highly of me to induct me in their Hall of Champions. So to the alumni, Dr. Smite, Nicole Beeson, Eileen Scarra, Lexi, and numerous others who helped bestow this honor, I say thank you. One of my proudest moments in my life was receiving my nursing degree. I knew that all my hard work throughout the years of schooling would pay off. I looked forward to becoming a nurse. That a dream I held as a child. As Dr. Smythe said, I helped my mom care for my smallest siblings. And you know, it's kind of drawn me to become a nurse. And I really loved it, I enjoy it, and still, I'm retired now, but at least I'm, I miss work some days. But you know, I'm retired now, so I have to take that on the understand that. So, <clears throat> I'd even lost my space. <laughs> I could never dreamt that it would be, it will culminate into such a wonderful honor. Before coming to St. Joe's, I work in the transitional care unit, as Dr. Smite said, and my patients would tell me so much about St. Joe's. St. Joe's is now an out in the community, just St. Joe's. And they would say, oh, the, the care there is so good. My aunt went there, my this, my that, and everybody. And I thought, oh, OK. I think I want to go there and work. So I came. So at the time when I came to St. Joe's, all I had to do was to fill out an application. 
That's how long ago it was. And nothing else. I was definitely focused on my dream. I even took a 20% pay cut because I knew this is where I wanted to be. And I can say, well, look at me now. <laughs> 24 years later, that pay cut has resulted in an incredible investment in my life. Talk about sacrifices paying off. I will, not, I will now, because of my hard work and dedication, have a permanent home at St. Joe's. A shy and eager young nurse who was willing to pay her dues, learn, grow, began working at St. Joe's in 1995. It's now a strong leader and change agent that has retired from this organization. I am so proud of the work that I've done at St. Joe's. My special quality projects for Two Central were integrated in the hospital's process, processes, and I'm grateful and proud of my accomplishments. I want to say a special thanks to Eileen Scarr. Eileen, could you please stand? Eileen. That day when you came on the unit and you said, I went to the meeting and you know, they're talking about the clinical ladder and you gave me that application to fill out. I don't know if you remember, I took it and I looked at it and I looked back at you and you said, I want you to apply. And I took the paper and I said, okay. But in my mind, I was happy being the bedside nurse, being the best nurse I can for my patients and doing what I was doing. But we must, okay, you can sit back. <laughs> yes, just want you to be recognized. Right, so then I went home um, and I said to myself, should I really do this or not? Because I was happy being the preceptor, a mentor, and doing all I could for my patients. And I was happy, that was where my joy was. Now, I went home, I discussed it with my husband and my daughter. She says, mom, you should go for it. So I decided to pick up the challenge. I was accepted in the first class of senior clinical nurses, nurse at St. Joseph Hospital. Now, this new title brought new challenges. In addition to my bedside duties, I attended meetings, created presentations, did training, and most importantly, sought buy-in from my nursing pairs. It worked. My programs were successful, and I felt and still feel very accomplished. And I could not have done that without my pairs. Because everyone knows it takes, and I say it takes a village, it takes the team. I would like to thank the following people for their never ending love and support. First, my husband, my best friend Conroy, who is my driver. <laughs> he ensured that I was never late for work always on time for, my, for, for pay, he's patient for my late pickup. When I come out from work late, he's still out there waiting. His commitment to St. Joe's was as strong as mine. During one of the most awful snowstorms, our car got stuck in the driveway and we, we couldn't get out. So he said, okay, let's walk out to Northern Parkway and he put me in a cab. It, so he said to the cab driver, promise me you will take her safely. And he said to me, don't worry, I'll be there to pick you up. And he was. So for that, I'm grateful. And I thank you. And I love you. To my children, 
my family, my sisters, Dr. J, everyone, Colin. I'm just so grateful that you guys are here. And there's my co-workers in the back and everyone. I'm so grateful. I'm very happy to have shared my life with you guys. And I have to mention my son, Stuart, who I lost in 2019. I still wish he was here. To my sisters who traveled, I want to say thank you for your love and support. And I will mention again my two central family. I said it takes a village. Yes, it did. I love and I appreciate you all. My years of working for, for this organization has been life changing for me in many ways. My career was enhanced. I got remarried here. My grandchildren were born here and have made many undeniable friends. In my time of tragedy, the support I received was unimaginable. My induction in the Profiles of Compassion is a testament that hard work pays big dividends. To my fellow nurses, I just have to take time to tell you. I am finished with it now, but you have got to take time, find a little joy for yourself. I know a lot of times it's hard. You must make time for joy. It doesn't have to be a big thing just a little thing, but just take that time for you. It's worth it. I just want to say thank you. I love you. And I really appreciate this organization. I just want to say thanks a million.